Hello YouTube. This is another insight into the incredible capacities of the human bodies and human minds. And I'll speak today about the so-called berserk. And berserk or berserk comes from the old North berserker, which combines bear, meaning bear, and serker or shirt. According to Norse legends, berserkers or berserkers were warriors who wore bearskin coverings and worked themselves into such frenzies during combat that they became immune to the effects of steel and fire. Berserk was borrowed into English first as a noun and later as an adjective in the 19th century when interest in Scandinavian myth and history was quite high. It was considered a slang term at first, but it has since gained broader acceptance. They terrified everyone who was not lucky enough to encounter them during the battle. They growled, rushed at opponents without chain mail, and sometimes without weapons at all. But their shields in rage, and most importantly, they did not feel pain and often won victories in battles. Berserker warriors, as if, as if turning into some wild animals, gave birth to many myths and legends, and they themselves are seen as semi-mythical characters through the prism of the past centuries. Um, the nature of the fearlessness of warriors in different cultures is well known. The samurai, for example, put above all the, above all the rest the honor of dying in battle for their master and therefore they do not avoid death and do not shackle themselves with excessive caution but in the north of Europe berserkers once raged in the literal sense of the word they were not samurai at all but they were a curious category of warriors to study but you see it's not too easy to study them because to date this phenomenon has reached us rather in the form of legends than being described in historical documents to be confirmed by facts. The tribes of Eastern Slavs knew berserkers firsthand and most likely tried to avoid meeting them at all costs. But how it was avoided? Uh, the times from the 8th to the 9th to the 11th century uh, were the period of the domination of the Vikings, the sea robbers, um, who initially limited themselves to the devastation of coastal villages and cities, and then conquered the lands of northern Europe, and of course not only there. It is the Vikings who are associated with the history of berserker warriors, mysterious characters of Scandinavian history. But why mysterious? Yes, it's just that if berserkers existed, such as they now appear to historians, it was before the appearance of writing on the territory of Scandinavia and Northern Europe in general, that is, before the spread of Christianity there. Starting from the 12th century, uh, sagas became to be recorded, literally works based on oral narratives. But even these sources cannot be considered reliable enough because by that time sagas have been told for more than 100 years. In uh, Byzantine sources, descriptions of such fearless savages are found. However, they are not called berserkers. Um, the first of the documents where the word berserk appears was the saga of Torbjorn Hornklovi about the battle of Havjofjord, which took place in, 18, in 872. Translated from Old Norse, berserk means either bare skin or naked shirt. Both interpretations are allowed because berserkers, according to the epic, really fought without chain mail and did not use defensive weapons and preferred bare skin as clothing. They fought with special fury, frenzied, entering into a state of rage that could not be subdued. During the battle, berserkers did not feel wounds. According to beliefs, neither iron nor fire could kill them. 
it was as if they themselves turned into bears. The emergence of legends about werewolves is therefore sometimes associated with these warriors. Berserkers often started a battle, so it was possible to introduce uncertainty or even panic into the ranks of the enemy. Apparently, these intimidating looking uh, warriors often went into the um, source service of various rulers, performing the functions of both personal bodyguards and execu executors of special assignments of their lord. They sailed on Viking ships, becoming excellent help in conquering new possessions. Berserkers did not cut their hair or shave their beard until they won their first victory, and then they got rid of the hair on their heads. Traditionally, a berserker's weapon is considered a battle axe or a sword, but according to legends, such weapons could be thrown away and they fought with almost bare hands. After all, the beast does not use human weapons, except for a club or a stone raised from the ground. After the end of the battle, the berserkers fell into a long, up to several days, sound sleep. So how do we explain the disappearance of berserkers? Even if the information about the berserkers cannot be considered absolutely reliable, numerous mentions of them in ancient works make it possible to form some idea of this fighting madman and make assumptions about the reasons for such behavior during the battle. The supposed belief of berserkers in the possession of animals. The animal spirit is quite common. Ethnographers have confirmed that similar things have happened in other countries. If the spirit takes possession of a person, then he does not feel any pain or fatigue. But when this state ends, the possessed person falls into a deep sleep. According to one um, account, berserkers used tinctures of hallucinogenic mushrooms, in particular fly agaric, as shamans of some northern people do. Other attempts have been made to explain the berserkers' rage, where the source of power is not transcendental forces. But let's, let's not go there yet. The state of intoxication, bouts of rabies, hallucinations, and subsequent fatigue could be caused by chemical substances, namely, namely muscarine, fly agaric poison. Today we know that people with fly agaric poisoning are widely uh, striking around themselves when they're excited, they're visited by delusional thoughts in other people and doctors, they see fabulous creatures, gods and spirits. The toxic effect stops after 20 hours and then people fall into a deep sleep from which they in most cases wake up only after 30 hours. Researchers know why people become like this after eating fly agarics, chemical processes occur due to hallucinogens similar to LSD. Mascarine is one of them, changes the speed of impulses of nerve endings, causes a feeling of euphoria. Uh, but there may also be the opposite effect due to the large amount or bad trip, which can end in death. However, the coming changes caused by this substance are surprising, which initially occur only in one person and then spread to all. Um, I was told that at some techno parties you can observe a similar effect. The behavior of a person who has taken a hallucinogen, rhythmic music, monotonous clapping, stomping, lead others to the same state. This synchronization is carried out by activating the neurotransmission system inherent in the body, the action of which is similar to the actions of drugs. Thus, there is a dynamic that can be called collective ecstasy. It is assumed that the berserkers knew this and only a few leaders encouraged themselves with doping from fly agaric. It is certain that they knew what effect it has on a person. The Gottingen professor of psychiatry Hans Karl Lunar said this, Fly Agaric 
has played an exceptional role as a mythological remedy in subarctic and arctic spaces since the beginning of time. It was used by the tribes living here for ecstatic practices. However, there is still no exact evidence of such a theory. Um, but this does not some historians uh, from believing and what they believe is that precisely because only the northern warriors knew the action of the fly agaric, they hid this knowledge, preserving the fearlessness and invulnerability of the gods. But is that so? Modern science knows that the human nervous system, including those part of it, that are amenable to conscious control, is capable of producing substances that are close to drugs in their composition and action. They act directly on the pleasure centers of the brain. If these substances are released when a person falls into a certain state of consciousness, then in this state he or she experiences a complete analog of high. And when he leaves it, the withdrawal begins. Professional berserkers became hostages of their own rage. They were forced to look for dangerous situations that would allow them to engage in a fight or even a provoke, to provoke them. Hence the berserker as sociality causing alert even among those who admire their courage and fighting ability. And from here this very combat capability manifested in the condition of opening the floodgates. There is the phrase, there is rapture in battle, so it took on an literal meaning. Later, the Vikings, for the most part, still managed to control such attacks. Sometimes they even entered a state that in the East is called enlightened consciousness, although they usually went to it not through detachment, not through meditation, but through combat rage. Such a path is sometimes fraught with the fact that the beast will prevail over a human being. This made them phenomenal warriors. Some ethnographers suggest that berserkers belong to a certain secret unions or families in which knowledge of mysterious forces or plants of power was passed down from generation to generation. Others believe that there were associations of berserkers, male unions, and that the manifestation of berserker rage was a test of courage that every young man needed when entering an adult union. Many primitive peoples could observe such rituals with dancing in masks and ecstatic states. Inexplicable, however, is this theory. What remains the fact that nothing like this exists in any of the Scandinavian sources. Doctors also contributed to the issue of the berserkers. The legendary power of berserkers has nothing to do with spirits, drugs, or magic rituals, but what it was an inherited disease. That's what the doctors uh, think. For example, Professor Jesse Bayak. The Icelandic poet Agil was hot-tempered, angry, invincible, just like his father and grandfather. Stubborn character and his head was so massive that even after Agil's death, it was impossible to split it with an axe. So it is written in the saga of Agil. The descriptions indicated um, they allowed Bayok to learn that Agil's family suffered from Paget's syndrome, a hereditary disease in which uncontrolled bone enlargement occurs. Professor Bayok state, stated, human bones renew themselves gradually and usually the bone structure is updated in eight years. However, the disease increased the rate of destruction and neoplasm so much that it changes the bone structure too much and they become much larger than before. The effects of Paget syndrome on the head are especially noticeable. noticeable. Its bones become thicker. In England, 3-5% to 5 of men over the age of 40 are susceptible to this disease. But is it possible to attribute the myth around uh, berserkers only to hereditary disease? Another explanation for the state of frenzy is mental illness, possibly inherited from parents, which could lead to the transmission 
of such style of battle to offspring another probable reason for exceptional bravery and insensitivity to wounds is the state of combat trance which was caused by special rituals um, you know the story is still mysteriously and stubbornly resists unraveling think about all the above and imagine yourself in the place of king hard the fair-haired you want to conquer norway establish a kingdom a significant number of ships are at your disposal a lot of good brave and battle-tested warriors see but opponents they have the same opportunities you can improve your chances only when the opponents will not be able to oppose you with anything this can be elite units berserkers they occupy special places on the ship where they the, where the first collisions will occur and now think about what this elite should be like hysterically possessed inexperienced young drug addicts doped up from flyer garricks probably most likely it was the members of the male union who dedicated themselves to odin the best were put on the bow of the ship and they were trained not only in the excellent use of weapons but were also psychologically prepared for such a role and elite warriors knew how to intimidate the enemy with growling aggressive behavior and how to protect themselves from chopping blows with a dense bearskin and only with the highest tension not weakening with bitterness they could win in most cases this elite was convinced of the greatness of the task they were solving they were motivated their nature was in accordance with the goal now it's time to speculate about another semi-mythical property of the berserker its invulnerability a number of sources unanimously claim that the beast warrior could not actually be killed in battle however the details of this invulnerability are described in different ways the berserker allegedly could not be killed or wounded with a combat weapon which meant that it was necessary to use non-combat we weapons against them a wooden club a hammer with a stone pommel etc sometimes he was invulnerable only against throwing weapons arrows and javelins in some cases it was clarified that with skillful possession of weapons he could still be wounded and even fatally fatally but he could die only after the battle and before that he would not seem to notice the wound everywhere and always legends were formed around the high level martial arts but i think we can get to the truth here the easiest way to solve the issue of invulnerability with combat weapons as long as the sword remained with the scandinavians as a weapon of a small elite somewhere before the 8th to 9th centuries such elite warriors were very often could not cope with their competitors animal warriors who used ancient mace fighting techniques in the end there was a fusion of two fencing techniques many berserkers became elite and many of the elite mastered the berserker skills with the end of the viking age in the 11th century berserkers were no longer considered heroes um, as before during the conquests they did not like to work and could not really work and it was difficult to find the use of their fighting rage in peaceful life legends say that during their fits berserkers threw huge blocks of stone and uprooted trees a kind of wisdom of madness protected berserkers from throwing and from striking weapons <clears throat> this inhibited consciousness including included extreme speed of reaction sharpened peripheral vision and probably provided psychic skills the berserkers saw or even predicted any blow and managed to repel it or bounce back king harald who united norway for the first time had special forces <coughs> from formed from berserkers who joined the military elite by that time there were no wild animal warriors who were not part of squads and similar formations in norway one of the battles with their participation looked like this 
The king's twelve berserkers were on the bow of the ship. The king's, king's ship was going forward and there was a fierce battle. When the army was checked, many were killed and many had dangerous wounds. There was no one on the king's ship who stood in front of the foremast and was not injured except those whom the iron did not take. And these were the berserkers. One of the best warriors of Iceland, by the way, who did not consider himself a berserker, describing his actions in battle against a numerically superior enemy, uttered these words. Here I took a sword in one hand and a spear in the other and began to chop and stab. I did not cover myself with a shield and I don't even know what protected me. This was the saga of Nyala. It was berserkerism that protected him, already civilized and therefore not considered to be as such. This is all the more remarkable because the Viking who mastered only the technique needed a shield. He could not fully fight off with offensive weapons. Berserking helped to repel dangerous blows, but if the blow was missed, well, it's hard to believe, but many independent sources report that the Viking to some extent maintained combat capability even after monstrous wounds, horrible wounds, uh, from which a modern person would instantly lose consciousness. Um, with a severed leg or arm, a split chest, a punctured stomach, he continued to fight for some time and could take his killer with him to Valhalla. And yet, there are descriptions of cases when the berserker not only avoided the wound and not even just tolerated it, but having received a blow, remained exactly unharmed. Is that also an exaggeration? Maybe. But it is very similar to the Eastern Iron Shirt method, in which the hardening of bones and muscles and most importantly the ability to concentrate internal energy in some cases make the body difficult to invulnerable even even to be invulnerable to a blade but viking blades are no match for eastern ones no matter how much northern warriors admire them this admiration comes from a lack of material for comparisons at least in the days of the berserkers the hardening of the blade was only superficial and it was far from sharpness and elasticity of the samurai katana besides even the energy did not always save the berserker sometimes a missed sword strike did not really dissect the body but caused such a serious injury that it could ensure the final finality of the fight after all the berserkers had opponents, opponents to match them, and not every berserker knew how to use internal energy completely or competently. Sometimes they spent it too extensively, and then after the battle the warrior fell into a state of berserker impotence for a long time, which was not explained only by physical fatigue. The attacks of this impotence were so severe that a warrior beast could sometimes die after a battle even without being wounded in it. In literature, berserkers often appear in pairs more than once, there are 12 of them. They were considered to be personal guards of the old Norse kings. That's what they were considered to be. This indicates the elitist nature of this warrior case, caste. Would the rulers surround themselves with crazy, deranged warriors? Definitely not. Only the most skilled were there. Immutable loyalty to their ruler is found in several places in the old sagas. In one of the sagas, the king of the Danes, Hrolf Krake, had 12 berserkers who were his personal guards. Bedward, Bjarki, Hjalti, Hodgemut, Zwitserk, Kuhn, Wirt, Veseti, Baigud, and the Sweepdag brothers. 
the historian Tacitus mentioned a special case of warriors which he called Harir and uh, who bear all the signs of berserkers. It was 800 years before the Battle of Boxfjord. They are stubborn warriors. They are characterized by natural wildness, black shields, painted bodies. Um, they choose dark nights for battle and instill fear in opponents. No one can resist their unusual and hellish appearance. Harir means warriors, and one of them was called Herion, Lord of Warriors. None of them had their own house or field or kind of care. Uh, they came to anyone to be treated. Um, they were careless in their uh, affairs and only the weakness of the old age made them unfit for military life. They considered it a shame to die of decrepitude in their own beds and when they were about to die they were stabbed with a spear. Also there is a theory that says that the concept of berserk is also connected with the Greek mythology where Hercules, Achilles, etc. possessed all the features of warriors of wrath. 200 years after the Battle of Boxfjord, Christian missionaries descended on Scandinavia. The church did not favor the berserkers and in the new sagas they were already exposed as robbers and villains. All the beginning at the beginning of the second millennium these warriors were outlawed and after a few decades berserkers have already become part of the past. The old pagan customs and way of life were forbidden in particular um, those who wore animal skins. A law issued in Iceland in 1123 stated a berserker seen in a frenzy will be imprisoned for three years of exile since then the bearskin warriors have disappeared without a trace. Here is something interesting. And his men went into battle without armor and were like rabid dogs and wolves, biting shields and comparing strength with bears and bulls. They killed people and they could not be taken by fire or iron. This is from Snorri Sturluson, the circle of the earth. Such were the, the berserkers and most likely they have disappeared but the things that made them to be warriors, uh, warriors as they were might not have vanished from the face of our planet and could be seen in other tribes and we'll talk about it in the future and of course think about the special forces and special training that we don't even know about that exist in the world if you like my research, please support it uh, through the links you will find in the description to this video and I'll bring you more. And um, I thank you for your attention. Please subscribe to my channel and tell others.